So everybody, this is Trace Dominguez. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing good. You can find him at youtube.com slash Trace Dominguez. There's a link in the description. Uh, Trace does and has been doing science and informational content on YouTube for a while now. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? I started in 2011 okay. uh, making videos for discoverynews.com. And now uh, I've been just making stuff for myself now for about six months. Nice. And it's been nice. Sweet. It's nice to do your own thing. It is. Like make your own thing. So uh, here's a thing that I like to do with Wikipedia. There's a Wikipedia page called Wikipedia colon unusual articles. I found out about it from a YouTube channel um, that does a show called That Wikipedia List. Okay. And it's just a very long list of unusual articles. That is long. And I, there's too much stuff to take in. Yeah. So a thing I like to do is you take five minutes, find a topic, read about it, and then we will tell each other about it at the end of the five minutes. Okay. That's the whole process. What if I pick something that's already been picked? I mean, it's really... It's, it's very, very, unlikely. very unlikely, but I will let you know. Trace, uh, you're already looking, aren't you? I'm just reading the list. You're and cheating. Like, am I... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> our time begins. Timer. The suspense. Now! What is the weird thing you've got for me? Target fixation, also known as the moth effect. So target fixation <laughs> is common in motorcyclists, but also in cars and pilots, and okay. was identified during World War II. Uh -huh. Essentially, people see something, and they become fixated on it until they start steering the vehicle toward the thing that they're trying to probably avoid, usually. Right, right, right. So, like, if you think about it, their examples, their examples are things like police officers who have bright lights, mm -hmm. and those bright lights attract the eye of the people driving by the police officers. So they end up crashing into the police oh, car God. because they were trying to, like, what's going on? And yeah, they turn no, I definitely crash. have done, did this when I was first learning to snowboard mm -hmm. I went if I whatever I was looking at I would go toward it and it was very like if yeah. there's something that I like distracted me I'd be like I'm gonna hit that now yeah and that's tar that's target fixation or the moth effect and like moth to a flame. Oh, okay. like you're you're going for okay. it wherever it is um, and I think it's kind of kind of funny to me because I definitely have done this while walking where mm -hmm. I get really excited about something. I'm like, what is that? And then I end up like cutting across like a whole bunch of people and be like, this is a really neat store. I'm freaking tourists. Like, yeah. But this is subconsciously. You're not it meaning to crash into the police car. And that's the problem, why the problem is mostly identified with motorcyclists. Because a car, because of the way you steer it, mm -hmm. has less of an influence from your subconscious. Uh -huh. mem like uh -huh. in terms of you're steering it just a little bit and you probably will notice. But a motorcycle, because of the way it steers and it's directly connected. So if you move it this much, you're going quite a distance, you mm -hmm. know? So motorcyclists have that problem where they'll maybe rubberneck or they'll look at something right. and the next thing you know, they're crashing. Right. And so that that's actually a really big issue. So if you're ever going to ride a motorcycle, make sure you look up target fixation. They gave us some tips okay. to avoid target fixation. On the Wikipedia page? On another website <clears throat> okay. about, that was specifically for motorcyclists but, <laughs> and drivers in general. And they said, look past the curve. Don't like look at the curve. Look through the car that you're trying to follow. Don't look at the car because if you look at it, you might steer toward mm -hmm. it. And if you look at the curve, you'll still steer into the curve as opposed to around it. Right. Stuff like that. So it seems like just being conscious can sort of make you avoid target right. fixation. And it's interesting when you talk about, like, I hadn't really put that into my head that a motorcyclist's handlebars are connected to the wheel. Like, yeah. there's no, like, I have to do this to make the wheel turn. It's yeah. like, this is the wheel turning. Yeah, because, like, on a motorcycle, I use a little scooter sometimes, and if you turn it this far, you're on the ground. They identified it, like I said, in World War II, because they found that fighter pilots would look at something, and then they'd end up flying the plane toward it. If you're in three-dimensional space and there's nothing else around, I guess it's not that big a deal. But if right. you're trying to, like, no, no, Germany, or, you know, no, 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 you have to go over there. Like, yeah. <laughs> not a, go toward Germany. I have brought you this Wikipedia page called Exploding Animal. Okay. Uh, there are a number of different exploding <laughs> animals. It's weird. Wait, they literally explode. Yeah. Like... So this is, this is a strange Wikipedia page because there is, a, like, the number of different k kinds of exploding animals and the different mechanisms, it almost feels like this shouldn't be the same thing. Like one page. So, like, ants sometimes explode themselves, like, to help the colony. 
and they like spread venom around. What? But that's very different from this thing about cows, which is like a cow sw- like swallowed a detonator from an oh. old bomb and then brought it up and to chew ex- the cud and then exploded. exploded. Poor cow. But the thing I want to talk about is the toads, because in 2005, in Germany, so officials, this is like a well-documented thing, like naturalists, environmental workers were finding a bunch of dead toads that had their intestines like up to a meter away from them. So these living toads were exploding. Yeah. And no one could figure out why. And there were lots of theories wow. about why, that it was a viral infection, that yeah. they were like blowing up, there's a bacteria inside of them that was like... Like, while they were still alive, releasing a lot of gases into them, and then they'd, they'd blow up. At least a thousand toads died this way. Oh. So a lot. Like this That's wasn't, a lot of toads. It wasn't isolated. It wasn't like, I was yeah. just picturing, oh, we found a few toads in this one pond. Yeah. But the thousand toads? Yeah, and it was uh, around one, uh, one area, and the locals referred to the lake as, uh, as the Tumpel des Toads. And do you know what Tumpel des Toads means? I'm going to guess toads means toads. But it doesn't. It oh. means pool of death. What? <laughs> That's why I asked. So they're trying to figure out what this is. A veterinarian from Berlin just finally just like went in and was like, I'm going to do necropsies on these toads. I'm going to autopsy them. This autopsy is when it's a person. Necropsy yeah, is when it's not a oh, person. Oh, see, I just assumed it was dissection. When you're trying to figure out information about what killed Right, them. yeah. Then I feel like you're right. And he found... Um, that before they died, they were attacked by crows. And the crows selectively liked to eat the toad's livers. The crows would hunt them down, hold them, eat their livers, and then let them go. And so the toads would and like, the toads be like wouldn't I don't die. know what to do. These to- the species of toad also has a defense mechanism that they blow themselves up, like they inflate <gasps> a bladder to make themselves look big. And so they would do that, but the weakness created by the crow eating out part of it, the the like oh, the pressure no. then blew the gas out of the hole that the crow had created, and the toads exploded themselves. That's horrifying. It's so bad. But also, oh god. Yeah. Scientists said crows are intelligent animals. They learn very quickly how to eat the toads' livers. Thanks. That is very German. Thanks, German, German <laughs> scientists. They learn very quickly how to eat the, the, the livers. <laughs> <laughs> They're delicious with a bit of mustard. <laughs> I looked up a picture of this and I oh. would not subject it to you without you making the decision to Google it for I'm yourself. Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it you can like you, science class, you look though. at that and you're like, that toad blew up. Yeah, like something it exploded. In Why it. are these toads exploding? You don't see oh this fr- this God. frog and you're like, wait, what happened? No, you know that it exploded. But it only happened in this one place. So these one crows. Yeah, it's just one like, like week, group. And it was a recent arrival of this species of predatory crow, and uh, and it happened that it was like this species of toad and this species of crow or this like group of crows because like they Little knew Venn diagram the kind of toad liver that they like and this was my second topic because the first one was too sad all the combinations of all the different things on earth is awesome. <laughs> yeah, except very sad. It's sometimes sad, but maybe we just notice it more maybe when I it's sad. Gone with, maybe I should have gone with Benson. This is a very big fish. Benson is humongous. That's a big fish. And he's just lifting her like she's nothing, but she weighs 63 pounds. <laughs> All right, Trace, thank you for joining me on this episode of I Don't Know What This Show Is Called. <laughs> uh, it was a pleasure. Wiki Wonders. Wiki Wonders. That's not bad at all. Well, if you use it, go for it. Okay. I, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I remember back in the day, I used to name my computers like very sort of like hackery names. Oh yeah, <laughs> when I was when I was a young youngster and I fancied myself a hacker. It turns out I was a hacker. I didn't realize it at the time. I mean? thought that like the way I was hacking was didn't count because oh. it wasn't like super technical. But you were like... There's lots of social engineering stuff. It was like, how hacking? do I get people's passwords? That's totally hacking. Yeah. Be like, so what's your cat's name? I would <laughs> set up services for people to sign up for, and they would put in a password in their email address, and then I would take their password and email address and log stuff. into their email. This video is brought to you by LastPass. <laughs> and all I ever did was put little pictures of Marvin the Martian inside of other people's websites. Marvin the Martian was your, like, calling yeah. card. I mean, that's hacking. It's, yeah, you're just not, you're not, you're just not being malicious. I didn't think it was hacking because it wasn't malicious. I didn't think it was hacking because I wasn't like using 
uh, you were you know, like root styling, like, <laughs> and like yeah, with like three D and yeah, doing yeah, this, yeah. And like yeah. loud hard rock. You can't music break in the dark. You can't break sixty four bit encryption. Well, we're gonna kill your girlfriend if you don't. Okay, oh, I get it. I've got it right here. Yeah. Oh, you broke it. Great. Okay, can you um, order some Postmates for me? 